Hi, I'm Symphoneers, and today we're taking a look at how Wizards of the Coast has been lying to you. Uh, that's probably what I'll put in the title or thumbnail or whatever anyway. More specifically, uh, it's been kind of discovered that there is an issue with how packs on Magic Arena distribute cards from bonus sheets, specifically Mythics from sets like Shadows over Innistrad and the kind of Shadows of the Past bonus sheet, which has Grizzlebrand and other heavy-hitting, uh, like, Mythic cards that players might really want. So, in other words, players are getting short-changed. Uh, Wizards is kind of scamming them out of money, effectively. Probably unintentionally, but we'll get more into that later. Uh, yeah, so the first couple minutes of this video are going to be kind of talking about the data we have to kind of support this conclusion or this claim, and then after that I will be talking more generally about, like, the shape of the loot boxes and gaming industry and all, all that kind of, you know, wide-ranging stuff. Let's get into it. Yeah, so about two months ago, Reddit user the Killer uh, kind of noticed, hey, these, uh, you know, throwback mythics on the Shadows of the Past bonus sheet, like Grizzlebrand and stuff, uh, it seems really difficult to actually get them from packs. I'm going to start, you know, tracking my information uh, and kind of taking a closer look at this. Uh, this is in addition to them just having a worse drop rate by default than some prior bonus sheet stuffs. So, you know, they, they were a little bit frustrated or whatever with the reward rate. They tracked it and they found that uh, across 624 packs, they also pulled in additional information from uh, pack opening videos on YouTube. Um, yeah, across all those packs that there were only seven mythics rewarded, which is, I believe, like a third of uh, how many there actually should have been. Uh, and, you know, that's no good. You might notice an issue if you're kind of familiar with, you know, stats or science or whatever, though, in that this data's not amazing. It has a couple of issues. Um, it's effectively self-reported. Uh, there's not any kind of actual record for big chunks of it. Uh, the sample size is significant, but not quite as large as you might like with the 624 packs. And yeah, just overall, not really enough to conclusively say, like, yep, there's a problem here. Uh, skip forward to yesterday as of recording, uh, and they posted another post on Reddit asking for streamers or YouTubers or whoever to uh, kind of assist with gathering some data here. Uh, they wanted someone to open 900 packs of Shadow over Innistrad and track how many mythics uh, from the Shadows of the Past bonus sheet that they opened. Uh, I did that. Uh, you can see the video of kind of all that in the linked in the description below. It's currently unlisted on my channel. Um, you shouldn't really need to watch it. Uh, long story short, I opened 15 mythics from that bonus sheet, uh, and you would have expected to open about 30 or so, um, which initially doesn't sound too bad, but uh, the actual odds of that are roughly 1 in 15,000, or 0.0006%, which another user uh, crunched some numbers on. Uh, Jikshan, or Jikshan, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, yeah. Jikshan did the math here. You'll notice that my numbers don't even clock in on their graph of what you would expect as the results from this set. Uh, in particular, they programmed it in the programming language R, and uh, they ran the test or like opened 900 packs using the Watsi data, or kind of ran that simulation uh, 10,000 times. Uh, so they would need to run it for like 15,000 plus times to start showing you know, 15 mythics as just a possible reward. So the odds of me running the experiment I did and getting the result I did are essentially zero. It's not literally zero, there's that 0.0000% uh, repeating chance that I did low roll, but by most metrics uh, this is pretty conclusive uh, evidence that something is wrong with how the uh, bonus sheet is rewarding mythic cards for the Shadows Over Innistrad packs. There's some anecdotal uh, evidence or like anecdotes in the Reddit thread about older bonus sheets having similar results, although we don't have any kind of good uh, conclusive information or data to support that uh, those claims like we do for the Shadows Over Innistrad packs. So to hit on a couple things that might spring to mind here, I think I mentioned that I did this on the um, early access client using a loaded account from Wizards. Uh, you might wonder, like, is the early access client really different from the standard Magic Arena client? The answer is essentially no. Um, it is a kind of branch of it, but it actually bolts on to the normal Magic client, like all your preferences and stuff from the normal client will be carried over to it. It's not doing anything weird or kind of especially 
different as far as I'm aware. Like, all the unique aspects of the account are handled server-side. So this data is like some of the most concrete third-party evidence that we can just possibly produce uh, that there is something wrong with how the Arena client is handling these mythics. I do think it's a bug. There's the saying of like, never attribute to malice what you can attribute to incompetence. Um, yeah, I think it's a bug. That's uh, kind of my, my suspicion, my guess here, kind of important to underline guess. I'm, I have as much information here as you do. Uh, I think that because I got like about half as many as I should have probably opened, I think that it is probably subdividing the rolled mythics or the potential mythics between the bonus sheet and the normal set, just because that would kind of explain the number split very neatly. It might be a different problem, uh, but yeah, hard to say without actually, you know, working at wizards and stuff. I feel like I'm forgetting something here. I'm going to give myself a moment to potentially edit in notes about the data so far. Uh, if I do, great. Good job, future me. Uh, if you're anything like me, kind of seeing all that data and kind of working through those numbers, your first thought is something like, oh, okay, does this actually matter? Can we affect change? Is wizards under legal pressure? Uh, the answer to the legal pressure question is almost certainly no, although there is some kind of international legal precedent for uh, prosecuting companies that improperly present or handle loot box information. Uh, the country with the longest history of regulating loot boxes is China, actually. Uh, they've been doing it for about five years, or a little over five years, just requiring that companies disclose odds and occasionally uh, prosecuting companies or, like, finding companies, although I had uh, problems finding specific cases to actually cite there. The next kind of most relevant country I could find was actually Korea. They fined Nexon $875,000 um, for misrepresenting the problem abilities of their loot box information. So kind of like what's happened here with wizards. And then over the past couple of years, there have been various cases in the European Union, uh, in the Netherlands, and I think Norway, uh, one or two other places maybe. Um, I struggled to find really specific or good relevant cases there, but an important factor across the cases I could find was whether or not the loot boxes um, paid out like uh, uh, something that was equivalent to money, like something that could be traded for actual money. So uh, Magic Arena's cards not being tradable would actually be kind of legal insulation for wizards on that front. Um, although I think an interested lawyer would still probably have a case, uh, based on the fact that the cards can still be used in cash or like real money tournaments in client. So they have uh, demonstrable earnings utility even if the asset is not actually liquid, as was important in the other cases. So a kind of knock-on question from that for me is like, does anyone care? Will wizards face any repercussions at all for having scammed customers out of, uh, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of value? It's hard to say exactly what the potential damages are because we don't know uh, wizard sales figures for uh, Shadows over Innistrad packs on Arena. As best I could find, there's essentially no direct legal regulation over loot boxes in the United States. This is largely because uh, the Entertainment Software Association, which is a kind of joint group funded by, uh, what is it, like Blizzard, Bandai Namco, Bethesda, Electronic Arts, Konami, uh, yada 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 yada, like a, a bunch of big entertainment companies fund this group and they do policy research um, and development and like lobbying and stuff. Wizards of the Coast is a member of the ESA. They have largely operated uh, kind of saying uh, and, you know, saying to lawmakers and stuff that like, hey, we can self-regulate. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry worry about it. Uh, we'll get a bunch of our members to disclose the odds on their loot boxes, and Wizards of the Coast is, um, you know, one of the companies that they specifically name in their 2019 press release on this topic, saying that, like, they will do this, and presumably, uh, you know, not doing it accurately breaches whatever you would call this. But this alone doesn't really mean anything in the sense of that, like, the ESA doesn't exist to punish its members. It's not a regulatory body in that way. It's to, uh, you know, uh, lobby for them and stuff. Like, it is to protect and empower its members. Um, it, like, and that is very much their modus operandi. Like, they will consistently say that, no, loot boxes aren't gambling, even though there is extensive and relatively conclusive research that this is damaging people's lives and, you know, bad for players and etc. I found a couple of interesting papers when I was doing, like, research on this topic, and I'll link to them, uh, in the description below. Um, the most relevant one, uh, 
I'll, I'll avoid like slinging numbers and stuff at you, um, but from one paper, uh, this is by, to give credit, uh, Leon Zhao, uh, Laura Henderson, and Philip Newall, the discussion and conclusion. The results are conclusive evidence that legal regulation is more effective than Western industry self-regulation. Companies were statistically significantly more likely to disclose probabilities in the People's Republic of China where legal requirements uh, applied than they were to disclose in the UK, that's where the study took place, uh, where the only advisory level industry self-regulation applied. Indeed, 31.6% more of the highest grossing games, uh, they looked at the like top 100 highest earning games in, uh, I believe, the Apple App Store. Uh, uh, yeah, 31.6% more of the highest grossing games disclosed probabilities in the uh, People's Republic of China than did in the United Kingdom. Therefore, policymakers and regulators in countries such as the UK and Australia, where uh, practically voluntary and non-enforced industry self-regulation similar to Apple's is already in force, should nonetheless consider imposing loot box probability disclosure requirements as law to increase the rate of compliance and to better protect consumers from potential loot box harms i.e. overspending. So this is kind of saying like, hey, this this loot box self-regulation stuff, uh, they're not really doing a good job of it. Uh, platforms, Apple's App Store actually has like a loot box requir disclosure requirement on their platform uh, about disclosing odds and stuff, and the same is true for many other platforms, like I believe the Epic Game Store has it as well. I think Steam does, although I'm not 100% on that one. Um, so that is kind of one potential uh, backlash point for wizards here is that if people make a fuss about it, and honestly I would encourage you to because I believe, you know, companies should be regulated and face consequences and etc. Uh, if people like complain to those platforms that, uh, you know, this company is scamming them out of money, uh, they can get the app pulled and that represents, you know, a dwindling uh, or, you know, part of their potential market share being shut off from them. Uh, it can hit their earnings. Aside from the like soft regulation element, a kind of follow-up point uh, that arose in the papers uh, that I found interesting, again uh, in another paper that I will also link to done by I believe the same researchers and um, Johan Yang, uh, in addition to the prior names I mentioned, is that even if companies do disclose probabil uh, probabilities for their loot boxes, it's not necessarily done in a helpful way, especially when they are self-regulating. Uh, once again, I'm going to avoid like slinging numbers and stuff and just read the conclusion from this paper. Uh, or part of it. Uh, however, the actions of some video game companies do at least seem to draw parallels with the arguably socially irresponsible corporate actions in other more established uh, addictive areas. For example, the alcohol, gambling, and tobacco industries have all taken uh, various actions that likely reduce the effectiveness of their product warnings. The actions of most video game companies in this study appear to be more consistent with ideas of sludge or dark nudges which inhibit optimal consumer choice than with the traditional conceptualization of nudge which aims to improve consumer choice. Given these findings, loot box probability disclosure regulations should require uniform and visually prominent disclosures in order to best help inform consumers. So yeah, I kind of wanted to read all that or like get that, you know, in your mind um, as a means of saying like, whether or not there's a bug responsible for the issue with the mythics uh, from the bonus sheets and stuff, or it is actually like something malicious, um, I, I would assume a bug as I said earlier, but uh, whatever the deal with that is, the kind of prob uh, probabilities and stuff as they are presented to consumers is like not good in the first place. It's very difficult to check, uh, to actually like fact check um, what Wizards is doing. like. This is the kind of data I've presented in this video about the Wizards of the Coast stuff is some of the best data that it is possible for us to get. And like it was only made possible because I have special access to an account I shouldn't normally have. Buying 900 packs normally would be prohibitively expensive for any, any one person to do. Uh, so it's like difficult for the consumer to actually check, assuming they care enough to actually part, like click on the little tiny poorly presented, you know, one out of 30 packs thing that is in the client and do their own investigation and yada yada yada. The kind of current state of affairs is not great. <laughs>
<sighs> I've been rambling for a while, so let's kind of summarize and like closing notes. Um, yeah, so Wizards is almost certainly, you know, inadvertently or otherwise scamming or shortchanging people in regards to the bonus sheet mythics from Shadows of the Past, uh, if not other bonus sheets as well. Um, the it, It's a, maybe a kind of narrow problem in the sense that like this is an isolated issue, but I think it's a very important issue in terms of like consumer rights and uh, people's ability to advocate for their own protection and, you know, to protect like actual children from exploitative gambling practices. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping that this will gain traction in the sense of like, it would be nice to see Wizards make a statement on this or be like, hey, we fixed it. Uh, they are under effectively no obligation to do so. Like, I would be very surprised if they do end up getting fined or anything. Um, like, odds of that are slim to none. But it would be cool if they were, you know, responsible and, like, fixed it, public, uh, publicly disclosed that, yes, this is an issue that has happened, uh, and, you know, maybe go the extra mile and actually reward affected players some Mythic Wild cards or something. Uh, I think the odds of that are basically zero, but, you know, it would be nice to see enough pressure arise from this, um, you know, from people contacting wizards, uh, contacting larger content creators maybe to, you know, signal boost the issue, whatever. Uh, it would be nice to see them face enough pressure that they actually have to deal with it, and, you know, dealing with it publicly and stuff would be nice. Um, I, I think that would be, yeah. I don't know, uh, god, corporations are a thing. Um, one, one thing you can do is just, like, write your local lawmakers, let them know that you actually care about something like this, um, and that the self-regulation argument that the industry is proposing is not adequate, like, um, self-regulation is largely a defensive measure, or, uh, especially in, like, we have precedent for looking at this as a defensive measure in the alcohol and tobacco industries and stuff, um, where it was very much trying to delay having to put the gross cancer mouth on the cigarette package. Like, the industry wants to avoid doing the gaming equivalent of that. Contact your lawmakers, let them know that this matters to you, that you would like proper regulation, uh, and that, like, maybe, hey, it would be cool if, uh, companies could be audited, if the, those regulations kicked in and consumers could actually be protected instead of, you know, having, uh, the ESA or whatever just kind of being like, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll protect you, but, uh, ooh, you, you gotta, you know, support our companies and whatever, I don't know. Yeah, I do not trust the ESA to do any meaningful regulation. ESA, I forgot to mention earlier, the kind of parent company or parent organization that handles the ESRB, or the, like, uh, most common video game rating system. Yeah, I don't know. Advocate for change. Uh, companies are not your friend, the house always wins, even if you don't, uh, even if you're not like me and believe that they will, are, you know, trying to eat your bones and drink your blood. See earlier Pinkerton's debacle. Uh, at least, like, Protect yourself. Advocate for yourself to, you know, lawmakers and, you know, larger than me content creators and etc. I think that's more or less everything. I've been in a weird place with content lately. <laughs> like, standard being boring and then I find this and it's like, oh, I'll do a video on that. Uh, I don't know. If you liked it, you know, like, subscribe, do all the normal cringy YouTuber stuff. Helps the channel and helps me a lot. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye bye Thank you for watching the video, and an extra big thank you to the Patreon patrons and YouTube members that help make these videos possible. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye